Hey folks, today I want to talk to you about the differences between inserts and sends and when you might choose to use one over the other. When you're first getting started, there can be a lot of different terms thrown around, such as aux tracks, buses, sends, inserts, and it's easy to get confused. So I'm going to demystify that for you today. So let's jump on in. Okay, so first let's talk about inserts. So I've got a guitar track here and my mixer down here. And this is the guitar track. And I'll just play a little bit of that for you. Okay, so when we start mixing, we're gonna start applying some effects. And we can do that either using inserts or sends. So when we're applying plugins and effects to an insert, this means the plugin is gonna affect the entire track that we put it on. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So here under my guitar track, in Logic Pro, we apply our inserts right here in this pull down list. So let's start by putting an EQ plugin on here. I'm gonna use the channel EQ and let's apply a high pass and you'll hear how it affects the entire track that I'm working with. So you can hear how that was cutting out all the low end of the track as I was sweeping it. So this EQ is affecting the whole guitar track that we have it placed on. Now this will be true for any plugin that I apply as an insert. So for example, if I add some reverb, I'll go below my EQ and let's go to reverb. Let's try the chroma verb. Now let's see what this sounds like right off the bat. Now in the case of this reverb plugin, we actually have wet and dry controls. So what that means is dry is our original signal and wet is the reverb signal. So right now we have 100% of the dry signal, which is our original guitar track, going through the reverb, but it's only affecting 50% of it. So right now we're getting a mix of 50% dry and 50% wet. Now, if I crank this all the way to 100%, you'll hear that there's a, there'll be a lot more reverb applied to the track. And if I pull it down to zero, now we're only hearing the original dry signal of the track. So if you're applying effects such as reverb and delay as an insert on your track, and you wanna dial in the mix of how much of the reverb you're hearing on that track, then you're gonna to wanna to look for the dry and wet knobs. So in this case, we're just gonna dial in the wet knob to taste for the amount of reverb that we want. Now in comparison, we can also use ascend to apply reverb. So let's look at that. So I'm gonna close my reverb and my EQ. I'll actually bypass the reverb for now. So now we're just hearing the dry signal as we did before. And if I go here, you'll see sends. So I'm gonna click here and under buses, I'll go to my first available bus, which is bus one. And that's gonna create a new track, which you'll see in a second. So that created this aux one track. And if you go to the top, you'll see the input is bus one. So when you hear aux and bus tracks, you can think of those as the same thing. So now under the send, you'll see it says bus one. And there's also this little wheel here. And right now, if I press play, nothing's gonna be changed from our original guitar track. Because at the moment, we're not actually sending any signal to this aux track. So if I go to this little wheel, this is how you control how much signal is being sent to this aux track. So if I click and drag up, now you'll see the little green lever and then you'll see those numbers climb. So if I go all the way to zero, that means I'm sending 100% of this track to this aux track. 
And if I press play, now you're gonna see some signal on this aux track. And you'll notice the levels are the same for both track. So basically all I've done so far is I've created a duplicate of this track getting sent to this aux track. So all I've done right now is just double the volume of the guitar track. Now where bus and aux tracks come in handy for reverb is you can put a reverb insert on this aux track. So let's just copy over the reverb that we had before on our guitar track. Or I'm just gonna move it over rather. And I'm gonna unbypass it. And now, in this case, I'm gonna make this 100% wet. So now what's gonna happen when I press play is I'm gonna have one copy of my original guitar track, which is the dry signal, and another copy getting sent to this aux track, which is gonna be running through the reverb, which is at 100%. So I'm gonna have basically one 100% wet reverb track and one dry reverb track, and that'll sound like this. So now when we wanna dial in our reverb using sends, we'll go back to this wheel and I can bring this all the way back down. And when I first press play, there'll be no signal sent to here. So there'll be nothing going through the reverb. So we won't hear any reverb. And I'll slowly bring this up and that'll send more and more signal to this aux channel. And you'll hear more and more reverb. So that's how I'm gonna dial in the reverb. <laughs> There you go. So that's how you dial in reverb using a send. Now, one of the advantages of having reverb set up as a send is I can send multiple tracks to this same reverb. So for instance, if I loaded up a keyboard real quick. Okay, so I just quickly put in this keyboard part. Now let's just rename a few of these tracks just so we don't get confused. So aux one, we can rename this to reverb. Instrument one, I'll rename this keys. So now if I want to add reverb to my keys track, all I have to do is go to sends, go to bus, and go to bus one, which is my reverb that I just renamed. And now same thing, I can just increase the amount using this dial and you'll start hearing reverb on those keys. So that makes it really easy to add effects like reverb to multiple different instruments. So generally speaking, time-based effects like reverb and delays, you would use using sends. And plugins like EQ and compression, you would apply those directly to your track using inserts. So I hope that helps clear things up a little bit for you. If you still have any questions, make sure to leave those in the comments. And if you're a Logic user, make sure to download your Logic Pro X hotkey cheat sheet by following the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.